this is my second one. So if this video comes out a little messier than normal, blame it on Simply Peach. Hi, my name is Adriana and this is the Mid-Year Book Freakout Tag. I think I said that right. So this tag is kind of a bastion of booktube now. You no longer need to tag people or get tagged to do it. You just kind of do it around when June time. When June rolls around, this tag is done. So there are a couple different versions of this tag because it's so popular. I'm going to stick with the questions I am used to and that I have done before in the past. So let's stop dilly-dallying and get into it. I didn't grab any of these books, so editing Adriana is going to have to cut out a lot of me standing up and down and grabbing books, but it's fine. First question, best book of the year. This was actually not hard for me and it's usually very hard, but this year I have a best book that I can confidently say, and that is The Shadow of Perseus by Claire Haywood. I adored this book with my entire being. I read this as a part of a blue mythology themed vlog, and I just, I adored it. I am a huge Greek mythology girly. If you've spent any time on this channel, you would know. I loved, loved, loved this retelling of the story of Perseus and Medusa, and it's just, it's just so good and I just love Claire Haywood's work. This and Daughters of Sparta are just so original, which is hard to do in a Greek mythology retelling. This and Daughters of Sparta are doing something that I think not a lot of other Greek mythology authors are doing. And if you are a Greek mythology fan and you have not read Claire Haywood yet, you need to get on it because I love, love, love this book. The next question is best sequel so far this year. I haven't read that many sequels this year. I haven't been very good about catching up on my series, but I think I'm gonna have to go with Cradle of Ice by James Rollins. This was one of the first books I read this year. And this is a epic fantasy from one of my favorite authors who traditionally does like, or I guess not traditionally, but the reason he's my favorite author is because of a thriller adventure series. So it was different for me to jump into his same style of writing in kind of an epic fantasy setting, but it's a chunky book and it took me a while to remember what was going on and really get into it. Mostly just because like epic fantasy isn't really my, my gig, my game, whatever you want to call it, but I just love this author so much and his style and like fusing that kind of action adventure style with a fantasy world is just so fun and the insanity of his adventure thrillers is just dialed up to 11 because we have crazy monsters, not monsters, creatures. James Rollins is also a veterinarian. I think he's like retired from like vet work now, but he's like super into science and animals. So this book is chock full of super, super unique world building and creatures. We got like these beautiful creatures artwork and they're just, ugh. I think, this series could become one of my favorite series. I just need, I need some more time and some more investment. And so it gets a bit of a leg up when it comes to like my favorite, just because I love the author so much. And I just, I, I know I can love it. I just need a little more time. <laughs> Question number three is new release you haven't read yet, but want to. And for this, I actually need to jump over to my bedroom and grab the book and come back because all my unread books are in the bedroom. <laughs> so the new release I haven't read yet, but I want to get to is Yellow Face. This is a very new release. It just came out in May, but I just, I am so, so excited. Everybody has been raving about this. I love RF Kuang. I love the premise of this book. I just think it's going to be a super, super great, intriguing, thought provoking read. Question number four. Four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. This is kind of a cheat because I have an arc of it already and I could just get to it now, but I haven't. <laughs> that is Tides of Fire, the 
16th or 17th installment. I don't know. The newest installment of the Sigma Force series. You can kind of see the beginnings of it over here, but I'm obsessed with this series. This is the series that got me into James Rollins. The author has really been like hyping up this book saying it's insane and bigger than any of his previous ones, which I love. I, I am very excited to get into this book. It's coming out in August, but because I have an arc, I will obviously be getting to it a little sooner than that. <laughs> and then the other book I'm really excited about is yeah. Dead Mountain by Preston and Child. This is the third official book in the Nora Kelly series, or no, fourth, I guess official book in the Nora Kelly series. The Nora Kelly series follows an archaeologist, Nora Kelly, and her acquaintance slash becoming her friend, FBI agent Corey Swan. And somehow Nora Kelly always opens up some sort of FBI investigation with whatever dig she's on, and it just turns into a whole big mess. And it's super great every time. I am a little nervous about where the third book left off and what that's going to mean for the future of the series. So I'm very much anticipating the release of Dead Mountain, but I'm also very nervous about it because I don't know what is gonna happen in the series. <laughs> Question number five is biggest disappointment. And unfortunately, that was for the first time again by Sylvain Nouvelle. I loved, loved, loved the first book in this series, the Take Them to the Stars series, A History of What Comes Next. Like honestly, this is one of my probably top five favorite books. I adored this book. And then the second book was not as good and the third book was also not as good as even the second book. And I have like, do I talk about this in a vlog? I think I talk about this in a NetGalley vlog because I think I did get a NetGalley arc of it, but it was just so heartbreaking to like have a first book that I so, so adored and to have that like be finished out by a book I thought was just like, okay. So that was definitely very disappointing just because I really wanted the third book to make up for my lack of love for the second book. But unfortunately, that did not happen. Question number six is your biggest surprise of the year, and that is... Oh no! Oh, I'll fix that later. Okay. <laughs> Gold Diggers by Sinjena Sathian, and I, unlike my biggest disappointment, I came into this book with not low expectations, but just like different expectations. So a while ago I was subs subscribed to this subscription box from a indie bookstore in Portland, Oregon, and they sent out books from local-ish authors and kind of like, it was a subscription box. And I had enjoyed the two other books I managed to get from the subscription service before it ended. I am glad I read them, but they weren't like enjoyable in the same way as like this book was. So the other two books I got from them were What Strange Paradise and Everyone Knows Your Mother is a Witch, which are both very thought-provoking, intriguing stories. But this one is, you know, thought-provoking, intriguing, uh, says a lot about modern society, but it's also laugh out loud funny. Like, so, so funny. The voice, the tone, the way it's written, the character interactions, just a really good, fun, relatable time. And so I was really, really surprised by that because I was expecting something that I wasn't gonna enjoy as much. Like, I, I'm having a hard time phrasing this appropriately. But I mean, like, there, there are just books like that. Like, there are books that, you know, you, you read because you know it's gonna be good for you and you know you're going to appreciate that you read it, but you know you're not gonna have, like, a good time reading. And this was not that. This was a very good time and I would definitely, definitely recommend. Question number seven is favorite new author. So I kind of have two parts of this question. Like I've kind of decided I need to read at least three books from an author before I can say, oh my gosh, it's one of my favorite authors. So I do have an author that I can now add to that official list of favorite authors. And then I have an author that like, I really enjoyed the book and I'd like to read more to see if they could be a a favorite author. <laughs> so the first one now officially installed as a favorite author is Jennifer Saint. So Jennifer Saint is a Greek mythology retelling author and can we give just major shouts to whoever does her cover design? Like they are all 
so cohesive and beautiful, but like completely unique from like book to book. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. But anyway, Jennifer Saint, I love, I adore. Ariadne was one of the first non-Madeline Miller Greek mythology retellings I read and just really got me into this genre and really like feeling it. Ariadne was a five star for me. Electra, it's a Trojan War retelling, which I just don't love as much, but I still liked it. I gave it four stars. And Atlant Atalanta, I read this fairly recently and just adored it. It's incredible. It's so, so fun. So overall, I think I can safely officially say that Jennifer Saint is one of my favorite authors. I will read anything she writes, even if it's not Greek mythology. I just think she writes fun, vibey stories with, you know, women discovering themselves and developing their relationship with other women around them and really contemplating what it means uh, to express their own femininity. And I just really love it and I appreciate it. And then because I can't stop talking about this, <laughs> I think I need to figure out how to say her name. Sanjina Sathian. This is the only book she's written so far. It was released in 2021. If she writes more books, I could definitely see her becoming a favorite author. I loved, like I said, the tone, the voice was so funny and relatable, and I would just love to see more from her. And I think she could be a favorite author if she continued to write and I could love more of her books. Question number eight is newest fictional crush. And am I gonna grab all the books? I should grab all the books. My newest fictional crush is the male lead from the Dragonheart Legacy trilogy. I don't know, whatever you're gonna call it. By Nora Roberts, Awakening, The Choice, The Becoming. Borrowed these from my mom. I need to give them back to her at some point. <laughs> the male lead, Keegan, in these stories is just my type. <laughs> he's, I don't want to say he's like kind of an asshole, but like Key and Breen, the female lead, they, they throw a lot of shit at each other and like they have fun and they like, it just, He's also very attractive. So, I mean, there's that too. But like, just his personality is very much on brand with like my husband's personality. So like, there's that. And honestly, I just loved all the characters in these books so, so much that like number nine, newest favorite character, we could go with Breen, the lead who goes on a journey of self-discovery. We could go with her best friend, who's kind of a gay best friend stereotype in the first book, but really develops over the series. We could go with her childhood best friend who is like kind of a badass, like, leather clad lady. I don't know. I mean, I, I love all the characters. All the characters in here, kind of stereotypical, kind of basic, but like, it just works. It just works. And I love them all. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry. And I don't think any books have actually like physically made me cry, but I've been there like on the verge with this one especially. And that was Small Miracles, the book that won the SFBO, what is that called? I don't know, the indie book awards. <laughs> there is a reason this book won. I adored this book. It is so short, but like so fun and just great. It's it's bordering on like saccharine at times, but it balances that out so, so well that by the end when we're really having these like deep emotional moments, I really did feel it like deep in my soul and loved, loved, loved this book. Uh, question number 11, a book that made you happy. I mean, honestly, all the books I've talked about so far have like obviously brought me a lot of joy. I've been like smiling through this whole video, but I think just for the sake of not talking about the same books over and over and over again, I am going to bring up The Bone Wars. This is a YA mystery thriller spy archaeology adventure and we know the more buzzwords you can throw in, the more I'm gonna be into it. 
<laughs> especially, you know, you got action, adventure, thriller, plus archaeology. I am there 100%. And this book follows like a spunky 16 year old girl on a dig in Montana. They uncover something that is very valuable. They get mixed up in this underground black market archaeology organization, secret organization, something crazy, and just really fun, really great time. I hope that this series continues. I don't know. That makes me a little sad if this is not going to continue to be a series. I don't know if it's going to. I haven't really seen anything from like the author or whatever, but it was fun. It was a very good time. I enjoyed it immensely and it made me very happy and especially like small Adriana who wanted to be a paleontologist when she grew up very happy. Uh, most beautiful book I acquired this year. I also need to go back into my bedroom because I am currently reading it. But yes, <laughs> The God Killer or just God Killer by Hannah Kainer. Just this cover is so gorgeous. Like it's just so intricate and detailed and beautiful. I love everything about it. It's got this incredible gold foiling on it and just this giant moon. And because it's the Illumicrate edition, it's got these super pretty braid edges. And I just, something about this like color palette, like this pinky brown and like the white, the cream of the moon. It's just very like earthy, cozy. I don't know. I just love it. I love it so much. And then the naked hardback, breathtaking. So the characters on the front are just incredible looking. And again, more gold foiling on the side. The back is just like also just breathtaking. I just, this book is so pretty. I'm also really enjoying it so far, but you know, more than that, it's just downright beautiful. <laughs> Question number 13 are what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And these two books, they're literally goals that I set at the beginning of the year that I wanted to get them read this year. So like I kind of got to do it because it's a literal goal that I set for myself for reading in 2023. And one of those is The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. So I'm not drawn specifically toward epic fantasy, but I want to read more epic fantasy. Like I think I can really enjoy it. Like I adored the Poppy War. I'm really getting into the Moonfall trilogy um, that I talked about at the beginning by James Rollins and The Shadow of the Gods I think is another one that I could just really sink my teeth into and get really really into. I just need to force myself to read it because it's scary, it's big, it's chunky, it's but it's got a cool dragon on the front so there's that. The other one that is a literal goal for me is The Odyssey translated by Emily Wilson. Uh, you would think for being such a big Greek mythology fan that I would have read any of the Greek mythology translated sources that we have today. Ovid's Metamorphoses, any of Homer stuff, any of like the plays like Iphigenia, Electra, whatever. Nope, haven't read any of them. So gotta start somewhere and this seems like one of them and I should probably read both of these considering we're halfway through the year and I haven't broken open either of them. Um, but you know, procrastination is my middle name. <laughs> and the final question is your favorite book adaptation that you have watched this year. I have not watched a single adaptation. I haven't watched any new TV besides like Ted Lasso. I just keep rewatching the same shows. So there's that. But two adaptations I'm really excited about coming out this year or early next year is Lessons in Chemistry on Apple TV Plus with Brie Larson. I really enjoyed that book and I think Brie Larson is just impeccable casting for the main character. I think it's going to be really, really good. I have really enjoyed a lot of the stuff I've watched on Apple lately, so I think they're going to do a really good job. And then the other one that I am just 
tickled pink about and I'm so excited for is the Lightning Thief adaptation that Disney Plus is doing. I loved the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series as a kid. I have reread them as an adult and still really love them. So I'm really excited to see these books adapted well <laughs> and just get some redemption for these books. I would also love some redemption for like the cast of the original movies because they really were a great cast. Like everybody in the movie was good and then it was just everything about, everything else about the movie was like not great. But anyway, that is the end of the tag. So let me know what your best and worst books of this year so far were and thanks so much for watching and I will catch you on the next video.